this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at an unlocked GSM Android smartphone with a 5-inch 720p display. Nice thin design right here, 12 megapixel camera on the back, and it's called the Very Cool S505 Spark. Yes, Very Cool is the company name, and we've reviewed their phones before. It's very cool with the K. You can see it right on the screen right here. So for $199, you get an unlocked GSM phone. This works on T-Mobile and AT&T in the United States. It works on GSM carriers overseas. And in fact, it has two SIM card slots for those of you who like dual SIM phones. We're going to look at it now. Well, funny name aside, the Very Cool is actually not a bad unlocked GSM Android smartphone. It doesn't have everything in the world going for it, but for $199, no contract unlock. Works on T-Mobile, works on AT&T. It's not too bad. First off, one of the things I like about this, especially after looking at the HTC Desire 610, which is also $199 without contract on AT&T in the United States, is the display. It's IPS panel. Now, this is a 720p display, and it's 5 inches, so this is not going to be your flagship level crazy pixel density, but it's 293 ppi. That's not bad for your 1280 by 720 p display. Of course, there are gradients of quality and IPS displays. This one, you can see the rolling backlight on the camera, but not to the naked eye if brightness is set a little low. Like, aha, I just did that right there. See, but your naked eye can't pick that up. And viewing angles are good, but they're not as wide as some IPS displays. When you're looking at it head on to about a 35, 40 degree angle, though, it looks pretty darn good. Not bad, certainly for the price. Obviously, we have on-screen buttons here instead of hardware buttons. And this is running Android 4.2. Yeah, we're going back in time to Jelly Bean. That's one of the negatives about this phone, though. Folks at Very Cool say that they will have an upgrade to KitKat Android 4.4. Can't wait for that to happen, obviously. The design is obviously very Galaxy S4 inspired. In fact, if you look at it first, you might think it's a Galaxy S4. Kind of a subtle fish cross fishnet crosshatch pattern under the white here, but in general, the shape, the accoutrement, shall we see, the design elements are Galaxy S5-like, and that wasn't a bad-looking phone, so that's not a bad thing. Obviously, we've got our earpiece up here. We have our front-facing camera. On the side, we have our metal-looking accent here, which is actually plastic. The little body curve up to kind of make it look a little thinner than it is, but it is a pretty thin phone. It's pretty svelte, honestly, for a budget phone. Back, 100% plastic again with a very subtle crosshatch pattern that's really hard to see unless it's in person. It's glossy but it's it doesn't pick up fingerprints or show them too much. Here we have our 12 megapixel camera. That's a little bit better than you might expect for the price on the back. LED flash right there. Up top there's our headphone jack. Side the volume control is a little easy to press by accident when picking up the phone and there's our power button right there grab point over here to remove the back cover. Removable back cover, but first. But rolling around to the bottom first, there's our micro USB port, and there's a microphone hole. And yes, you can take off the battery. Oh, speaker grill right there. That's what the back cover looks like there. There's our battery, 2000 milliamps, given the processor and the screen size on this that you would think 2000 milliamps should be adequate but the processor is not the most power efficient but we'll get to that so two sim card slots we have a micro sim card slot in sim 2 position and sim 1 is a full size sim card slot so you can use this with dual sims some folks like that particularly overseas that's a popular feature micro sd card slot for storage expansion always a welcome thing so for those who haven't watched any of our very cool reviews before, who are they? They're a company that's based in San Diego. So here's the thing. There's a lot of cheap Android phones that you can buy, no-name phones off of some sometimes dubious websites. So one of the selling points for the very cool is that it's actually a U.S. company in San Diego who's marketing, making, and selling these phones. Of course, like all phones, they're all built in China, but they're the company in the U.S. responsible for this. So you actually have somebody to call in your own country if you do have problems with it. That said, we haven't had problems with the very cools that we've reviewed before. They have been pretty reliable. Now, I'd certainly be remiss if I didn't mention one of the other popular unlock phones made by an American company. We have the Moto G right here. Moto G is $179 for the 3G version, and the very cool is 3G only. They'll have a different model out that's finally going to have 4G LTE. But this one right here, HSPA Plus, and HSPA Plus 21 megabit per second, not the faster 42 megabit standard. So Moto G... More stylish, sure. A little bit smaller, though. You're getting a smaller display, obviously, on this. 
and for 229 you can get the Moto G with LTE if you want. So there's the competition. The mid-range is becoming a very tight place right now with a lot of very affordable but pretty decent quality phones on board. Now for those of you on AT&T, here is the HTC Desire 610, which is 199 full retail as well, 4.7 inch display on the HTC at a lower resolution actually, and not IPS, this is IPS in 5 inches, so and 720p, you're actually getting a kind of, I think in this one, a little bit more stylish looking phone, a little bit better looking phone, definitely a better looking display on it, but one thing that the HTC has is 4G LTE on it instead of just HSPA plus 3G. Now inside, in terms of horsepower, we have what's not one of my favorite CPU lines. This is a MediaTek CPU in it, and they've generally been a little bit underperforming and a little bit less on battery life compared to, say, the Snapdragon. And in fact, that is the case by a bit in benchmarks here. It's a 1.3 gigahertz MediaTek CPU with Mali 400 graphics, and it does perform just a bit under the Snapdragon 400 quad-core, which is on other mid-range phones. And for our quadrant benchmark, we got 5,900. Now compare that to 9,698 on the HEC Desire 610 running the Snapdragon 400, and you get the idea of the difference there. On 2.2, it's a bit closer. This scored 18,939, which is actually just about the same as we saw on the Desire 610 running on the Snapdragon 400. 3D Mark Ice Storm Unlimited 2,923 versus 4,854 on the Snapdragon 400. Sun Spider Web Kit 1,578, where lower numbers are better. The Desire score around 1,200, and Flagship score around 500, and some models from a year or two years ago score closer to 2,000. So you get the idea again, where lower numbers are better. So the sharpest knife in the drawer? No, hardly not. But Usable? Sure, it is. One of the things that stands in favor of this is it's running pretty much pure Android here, so you don't have a UI that's really bogging things down. This is just plain and simple Android system customization. The settings here, pretty much close to stock Android. You've got your quick actions right here, SIM management because you have multiple SIM cards, display. You can even set the display color temperature on this, but all in all, for everyday use, it's pretty usable. Uh, if, if you're going to be, if you're into 3D gaming, obviously a budget phone is not going to be the best choice. So something like Asphalt 8, you are going to see frame stuttering playing on this. If you're more into Plants vs. Zombies, it's just fine for something like that. It can handle YouTube streaming, and this again is HSPA plus 3G, not 4G LTE. So you're not going to get those wicked data speeds, but generally HSPA is adequate. But let's take a look at our speed test results so you can see here. Now, this model works both with AT&T and T-Mobile 3G HSPA bands. So these test results are in a mix of AT&T and T-Mobile SIM tests. Now, we did get as high as 7 on one test here, but we cleared our results out. But again, HSPA 21 megabit per second, that's what you're going to get. So very cool on their website lists that they have a tri-band 3G model and a quad-band 4G model, 3G model. Obviously, this is the quad-band model because it does work on T-Mobile. We've tested with both SIMs. So you get the 850, 1900, AWS 1700, and 2100 megahertz band. So it also will work overseas on the 2100 megahertz band. And it's quad-band for GSM voice and 2G. So as a world traveler, obviously unlocked, it's going to work just fine there. The phone has single band Wi-Fi, 802.11n, and Bluetooth. Sorry, no NFC here. Yes, it does have a GPS. They claim seven hours of talk time on 3G, and that's not really very impressive. And that's what I'm talking about when it comes to the MediaTek processor not being very power efficient. Indeed, it did reach around six and a half hours for 3G talk time on the phone, but by today's standards, meh. In actual use, it depends. With light use, it made it through the day just fine. If we did do things like gaming and a lot of navigation, then we actually had to plug it in by about 5 o'clock at night and top it up. With decent lighting, the camera is actually not bad. It's a 12, 12 megapixel rear camera. That's better than you get on your average mid-range phone. Certainly has HDR mode, as you can see right there. And that was our HDR, so that wasn't too, too slow. 
And you've got a couple of other effects right here, including things like panorama mode. You have a mode right here, which is it'll capture a picture as soon as it detects a smile. EV adjustment, more settings right here. Exposure, color correction, white balance, all sorts of stuff like that. And for our video capture, you can see microphone on, off. Time lapse, video quality high. You get the idea, so not a bad camera, actually for a mid-range phone. So that's the very cool S505 Spark. Again, it's available now. You can pick it up on Amazon. You can visit verycool.com to get the phone. And it's a crowded space. Certainly it is. But they do a pretty decent job of giving a reasonably stylish, reasonably slim phone with a nice enough screen on it. You get a slip case in the box. You get your charger, USB cable, that sort of thing. There's a screen protector pre-installed on it. So you certainly could do worse for $199 if you need an unlocked GSM Android smartphone, especially if you need one with dual SIM capabilities, which makes this one stand out above most of the other cheaper Android phones from name brand manufacturers available in the United States. So that's the very cool S505 Spark. Again, it's available now, $199 unlocked, no contract, nobody's going to nag you, no payment plans, no nothing. As long as you get $199, you can put this on your credit card, it's yours to take home. There is competition in the mid-range now, as I mentioned, particularly from the Moto G, but that has a bit smaller display and the camera's not quite as good as this. So there you have it. Biggest limitation with this one, you get 3G HSPA, you don't get 4G LTE. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to hit that like button.